Welcome back, everybody. This is lecture 29 on formal charge. It'll be a short one, and this is the very last lecture of chapter 6. We are on page 400 of our ebook. Uh, and before I begin on formal charge, just want you to be aware that in our book is the table that you saw at the end of the last lecture formatted slightly differently about hybridization. So uh, the top half of this table is again giving us the ability to, if we know how many electron groups there are and how many of those are lone pairs, predict what the hybridization will be in some examples. Remember, you don't have to do the expanded octet hybridization, nothing involving D sublevel electrons. Back to formal charge. Formal charge is a technique that we can use to predict if there's two possible or three possible or viable Lewis structures, which is the more likely Lewis structure to exist in nature. Again, formal charge is used to decide what the most likely Lewis structure is if more than one Lewis structure seems to be able to be drawn for a given molecule. Um, it's a fictitious number, like our book says in green here. It's a fictitious number that is again used to predict the most likely Lewis structure. And what it is, is the charge that an atom would have in a covalent bond, we're talking of course about molecules, if the electrons were shared evenly if there were no difference in electronegativity. And that's why it's a fictitious number is because most often the electrons will not be shared perfectly evenly between any two atoms. Formal charge, again, is a way to predict what the most likely Lewis structure is. Well, the way that we calculate formal charge, and then I'll show you how we use it, is by subtracting from the number of valence electrons that an atom has, how many it has when it's neutral, subtracting from that number the sum of the number of lone pair electrons each lone pair electron counts as one electron. So two lone pairs counts as two electrons. Subtracting from the valence electrons, the sum of the lone pair electrons, and the number of bonding electron pairs. Two electrons in a bond count as one pair. Count as one pair. An easier way to think of the formula, and how I'll be talking about it, is the number of valence electrons minus the number of dots plus the number of lines. Each dot being a lone pair electron. Again, each dot counts as one and each line counting as two electrons in a bonding pair. Again, formal charge is the number of valence electrons minus the sum of the number of dots, lone pair electrons, plus lines or bonding pairs. And I'll do an example with you. So first we're going to draw the Lewis structure for HCN because you need a Lewis structure in order to determine what the formal charge will be. Uh, remember, first thing we do when we're drawing Lewis structures is figure out how many valence electrons each atom has. Hydrogen has one. Carbon has four, nitrogen has five. One plus four plus five is a total of 10 valence electrons we can build our Lewis structure from. Then we determine the central atom. It's the less electronegative element, or if carbon's present, it's almost always carbon. And we draw the skeleton connecting the central atom to the peripheral atoms first via single bonds. So I've done that. I then subtract from the number of valence electrons, which was 10, the number of electrons that were just drawn via bonds. Two bonds is four electrons, 10 minus four, of course, six. We have six electrons to place first as lone pairs on the peripheral atoms. Remember, hydrogen never gets a lone pair because it has a full valence shell with two electrons. So I put them on the peripheral atoms first. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons I put on nitrogen, the peripheral atom. And I've run out. Remember, if you've run out of valence electrons and the central atom still doesn't have a full valence shell, that's when you turn a lone pair into a bonding pair to give that central atom more valence electrons. So I'm going to move those two to a bonding pair, which leaves nitrogen with eight, but gives carbon now six instead of four. And I've got to do that to a second lone pair as well. Excuse me. To, uh-oh, come on eraser. To give carbon the eight valence electrons it needs. So there's the Lewis structure for hydrocyanic acid or HCN. But we're going to pretend that maybe one wouldn't know that carbon should be central. So we're going to draw this Lewis structure with nitrogen being central, and it will otherwise look the same. And then we will practice calculating formal charges on all the atoms in these two Lewis structures and defend that this one we've just drawn, the one we know or presume to be correct, is based on formal charge. So here's what it would look like if nitrogen were central as opposed to carbon. And again, we'll assign formal charges to the atoms in this Lewis structure in this one and figure out which one is right based on that. So again, formal charge is the number of valence electrons an atom has minus the sum of the dots or lone pair electrons it has on it plus the number of lines. 
Hydrogen, I'm doing this for hydrogen right now, has one valence electron. It has no lone pairs, no, no dots on it, and it has one bond coming off of it. So one minus one is zero. Hydrogen has a formal charge of zero. We'll do it for carbon now. Carbon has four valence electrons minus the sum of the dots plus the number of lines or bonds. No dots, no lone pairs on carbon, so it's four minus the sum of zero and the four lines coming off of it, the four bonds. Four minus four is zero. Carbon also has a formal charge of zero. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, five minus the sum of dots, there are two dots on nitrogen, plus the number of lines coming off of it, three bonds, 5 minus the sum of 2 and 3 is 0. Nitrogen also has a formal charge of 0. All three atoms in that left-hand Lewis structure have a formal charge of 0. If we do it for the right-hand Lewis structure, hydrogen's formal charge will still be 0. Nothing has changed about hydrogen. Nitrogen, though, won't have a formal charge of 0 this time. Nitrogen has 5 valence electrons, no dots, 4 bonds. 5 minus 4 is 1. Nitrogen has a formal charge of plus one. Carbon's formal charge won't be zero in this one either. Carbon's formal charge will be its four valence electrons minus the sum of dots, two, and lines, three. Four minus five is negative one. Carbon's formal charge is negative one. So I'm gonna take us back to our book briefly, then we'll come back to this whiteboard to see the rules we use to predict which is the more likely Lewis structure once formal charges have been assigned. All right, we're uh, back in our book, flip the page, and we're at uh, top of page 401 in our ebook, looking at these four rules. First of all, if you assign formal charges properly, the sum of the formal charges of all the atoms in a neutral molecule equals zero, which when we go back to the formal charge numbers we assign to both Lewis structures, we'll see that the sum of all the formal charges in a neutral molecule should add up to zero. If it's an ion, though, that you're drawing a Lewis structure for, we know we can draw Lewis structures for ions. Remember, you put them in parentheses and put their charge in the upper right-hand corner. The sum of the formal charges for an ion, polyatomic ion, will equal the ion's charge. It's this third rule that is the most important to us. The Lewis structure that has formal charges that are closest to zero the Lewis structure that has formal charges that are the smallest possible or zero are those that are preferred. The goal is to have Lewis structures for atoms that have formal charges of zero or as close to zero as is possible. If two formal charges, excuse me, if two Lewis structures, right, two possible Lewis structures have the same formal charges, but they're on different atoms, then the preferred Lewis structure is the one where the negative formal charge is on the most electronegative atom. And we'll see an example of that in a moment. Again, small or zero formal charges are preferred. And if that's not possible and you've got a tie with formal charges, the negative formal charges go on the atoms that are most electronegative. And back to our example, notice that the sum of the formal charges in both of these Lewis structures, this is a neutral molecule, is zero. Zero plus zero plus zero is zero, and zero plus positive one plus negative one is zero. Notice in this left-hand Lewis structure, which we presume to be right to begin with, because carbon should be central, all the formal charges are zero, and that's preferred. Whereas in this right-hand Lewis structure, they aren't all zero. This is further proof or evidence that it's the left-hand Lewis structure that is the correct one, because the formal charges are all zero, or are lesser or closer to zero than they are in the right-hand one. All right, I'm going to take you now to an XAP question as one more example, then we'll give you two practice problems to try to do on your own. And that'll wrap up this lecture. All right, so here's an old question from an AP test a couple years ago. Two possible Lewis diagrams for fulminic acid, HCNO, are shown below. Lewis structures are drawn for us, of course. Explain why the diagram on the left is a better representation of the bonding and to justify our choice based on formal charges. What we want to do is justify that this left-hand Lewis structure has formal charges closer to zero, or they're all zeros, more so than the one on the right. All right, so let's calculate some formal charges for all these atoms in both Lewis structures. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and one minus no dots plus one line is zero. Hydrogen's formal charge is zero. Carbon has four valence electrons, four minus no dots, and four bonds, or four lines, is also zero. Carbon's 
formal charge is zero. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, five minus no dots, plus four bonds is one. Nitrogen's formal charge is one. Oxygen's formal charge, again on the left, six valence electrons minus six dots plus one line. Six minus seven is negative one. So you've got a negative one formal charge. A couple of zeros, a one and a minus one. All right, let's see what we get on the right. Hydrogen's formal charge will still be one. Nothing about hydrogen has changed. Carbon's though will be different. Carbon, four valence electrons, minus two dots this time, and three lines, oops, minus is going to be negative one. So carbon now has a minus one formal charge. Nitrogen, meanwhile, five valence electrons, minus no dots, plus four bonds is gonna be one. And then oxygen on the right-hand side, six valence electrons minus four dots, and two lines is zero. Oops, I made a mistake. You probably noticed that. Hydrogen's formal charge is zero on the right-hand side, as it was on the left. So we've got a tie in terms of numbers. Left-hand one has two zeros, a plus one and a minus one. The right-hand one has two zeros, plus one, minus one. Here's where we go to that tiebreaker. And we want the atom that is more electronegative to have the negative formal charge. So is oxygen more electronegative or is carbon? Well, we already know the left-hand Lewis structure is the more viable one. But if it hadn't told us that, we would say the left-hand Lewis structure is the more viable one because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So to get full credit for this, you assign formal charges to all these atoms. There has to be evidence of that being done. And then you say that because oxygen is more electronegative, it should have the negative formal charge over carbon, making the left-hand Lewis structure the more likely or viable one. All right, a couple practice problems coming your way. I'll ask you to try them on your own, and then you can compare your work to mine, and that'll wrap up this lecture. So we're back to our textbook, looking at these practice problems on page 402 of our ebook or 394 of our textbook. Question one asks us to assign formal charges to each atom in each of the following structures for CO2. And the Lewis structure is already drawn for us. Predict which structure is favored. So pause the video, uh, assign formal charges to each of these, and then use the rules for predicting which Lewis structure is more viable. Come back and see how your work compares to mine. Try practice problem one again on your own. All right, here's what I got. For the left-hand Lewis structure, I got formal charges of zero on oxygen, zero on carbon, and zero on the right-hand oxygen. And there's my work. On the right-hand Lewis structure, though, I got negative one for the left-hand oxygen, zero for the middle carbon, or for the carbon, and positive one for the right-hand oxygen. That renders the left-hand Lewis structure the more likely or viable one because it is the one that has formal charges on all atoms of zero. Left-hand Lewis structure is the likely one because, again, all the formal charges are zero. And that is carbon dioxide's Lewis structure that we likely know to be true. All right, same page. Give problem two a go. Come back, check your work against mine, see how you did. Again, you're going to want to assign formal charges for all atoms in all six Lewis structures and figure out which of those formal charges fit our rules. Here are the formal charges I got for all the elements in all six Lewis structures. Notice that in each Lewis structure they sum to zero because this is a neutral molecule. And the only Lewis structure with all zeros is the first one. The only Lewis structure with all zeros is the first one. Um, let's say though, let's say though, it's not the case, that all we got were B and C. We're just pretending all we got were B and C. Not A, D, E, and F. A is right. If we were to have to pick between B and C, again, neither of which is technically right, and the formal charge numbers are tied, which they are, then it would be B, not C, because oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. So again, if we had to choose between B and C, it would be B, but we already know it's A because zeros always went out. All right, folks, enjoy your formal charging, a way to predict which the more likely Lewis structure is. Have a great day, whatever it is that you're about to do, and thanks for staying with us in Lecture 29. Bye, everybody.